Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I am Danny Gregory, and uh, every Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific, we get together and we fool around with stuff. And here I am joined around with my fooling around partner. Is that inappropriate? No. <laughs> it wasn't untrue. But. I mean, we are married. <laughs> What is this, 1957? <laughs> um, yes, so anyway, uh, here's JJ. Hi, JJ, everyone. JJ, you're looking very I, crisp today. Yeah, I, I was wearing a sweater. I had to take it off because I was sweating through it. It's summer already here in Phoenix. It's true. <clears throat> but it's happy true. spring. It was the spring equinox this week. Time's flying. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost winter. <laughs> it'll be autumn again any minute now. Yes, it is nice. I mean, we have uh, our all of our trees now have something going on with them, and it's nice to see our roses, which were brutally pruned back, are savaged. Now, now savaged. starting it's, to actually. It's, we're sort of new gardeners, so the fact that you savage your rose bushes really gave us really pause. Scary. Yeah. And um, they're but they're coming back, and they um, and they're bringing all roses leafed with out. Them. But now we see buds, so I think it's possible by Easter we might have some some floral moments there in the garden. Um, yeah, it's nice. And our pear trees blossomed, and that was over with a month ago. I, I know someone in the chat mentioned their uh, blossoms are in peak. I think it was Kate uh, Peak in the North Pacific Northwest, so enjoy those. And uh, Let's yeah. talk about, uh, more importantly, let's talk about leprechauns. Yeah. I have to say, what an incredible kind of, cavalcade of leprechauns we had. It was fun, and I love that somebody drew the Celtic harp because that was the original idea. And uh, But yeah, again, always great variety, imagination, not taking it too seriously, you know, having a laugh, playing with color. Somebody drew the Lucky Charms um, <laughs> leprechaun too, I noticed. <laughs> and I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for... I felt my stomach kind of rumble at one point. I was like, what's going on? Ah, there's the Lucky Charms <laughs> leprechaun, so good. So yes. Um, magically so, delicious. Indeed. So let's see. Um, we have a few people visiting us here. We have uh, Christina, uh, who's coming from England. I saw someone from Guadalajara. Vanadana Dale is also from England. Um, Sue is here from England. She makes it yes. almost every week. Kovacha Kalehara, Kalehara from Guadalajara, Jalisco. I see you from my office, she says. Wow. That's very nice. Very cool. Don't let your boss, or if your boss comes by, tell him to come join you. I saw someone from Slovenia, which is very cool. Um, Autumn Hathaway says, this is exactly why I have my notifications turned off. You know what, Autumn? Thank you for saying that. Yeah, because that's, that is good. everyone who's failed to subscribe, please do so. We're trying to get up our numbers. We're, it's like the membership drive once again. We have a goal. We have a goal. We're we close have, to reaching it. We have tote bags that we want to go away. <laughs> We're trying to get to 300,000 subscribers. We're inching our way there. I, yeah. think, I think we'll be there eventually. We're hoping by April, but maybe not. We'll see. But, but I would got, also say another thing, that, us. another thing that Autumn points out, which is when you subscribe, you can also hit this little bell icon. And if you hit the bell icon, you get notifications. Being subscribed is one thing, but if you want to be notified when we come on live, do that, and then you'll, you'll know. Right. Ace McFly, 18 degrees in, is that Minnesota, Miss, Michigan? Awesome name. In Missouri. Burr, Missouri. Is it? MI is Missouri? No, MI is Michigan. Michigan, that's what I thought. Yeah. 18 degrees. I would Oof. suggest, we just had some visitors. We're going to have 81 degrees on Saturday. <laughs> we just had visitors from Michigan. Yeah, from Detroit. My cousin's from Detroit, and they are here playing golf. And they were being smart. They got the hell out of Michigan. Came down <laughs> here, so. so, yes. So, all right. Um, what else? I think that's it. I yeah. think we are ready. Yeah, what are we going to do today? Yes. Um, today we are going to do something that, as I was looking at those leprechauns, I thought, we're kind of in the same ballpark, which is slightly creepy characters. Creepy? Creepy? Is that the I, word you want to I'll use? I'll tell you why it's creepy, because, well, let me, I'll explain as we go. But basically, yes, slightly creepy characters, which are puppets. Today is National Puppet Day, or is it maybe possibly International Puppet Day? I forget I wrote it down. It's one of the two. It's international. We went through, today's, today is the day of a lot of days. Let me just uh, pull out what some of the other days were. 
the other days that were po possible was uh, World Tattoo Day. JJ? Yeah, I, I rejected Any? that. I think that's... Rejected, that, yeah. yeah. That's um, International Color Day. I, I was, you I know... Think, but isn't every, every day is International Color Day? Right, but it's also... I mean... What would we do with Color Day? Right. I mean, so here's what I would say. To celebrate International Color Day, use some colors today. Or wear some colors. Or see some colors. Right. Talk about colors. Um, <laughs> Canner says, clown puppet, and I'm out of here. <laughs> Me too. I'm with you. I don't think there are any clowns. Um, but it's also National Memory Day, which I took two ways, one, meaning is it about your memories, you know, old or is it about, or is or is it about, it, it's dementia. about the importance of memory, which is a weird, it's a weird thing to celebrate. Like, is it, I, I don't know, maybe I you're know. just drawing attention to it. These days, they're just so, I mean, there they're, are like, there's like a dozen, dozen days for, for every, every day. day. So yeah. there's like yeah. thousands of days. Um, but I was just invited to participate in World Watercolor Day this year. Month, month. Month. Yeah, watercolor needs a whole month. A whole month, as it deserves. I, I'm actually participating in World Watercolor Year, <laughs> as I do every year. And hopefully you'll join me in that. Yeah. Um, so, yes. So it is also World Puppetry Day. World Puppetry Day. So I went out and I got a bunch of puppets for us. Dan Bolton forgot that today was National Memory Day, as did I. Well done. Um, so... And Ace McFly says, March Madness starts today. Yeah. That's Arizona's it. playing tomorrow. All right. Well, let's see. Someone asked me not, to lower my chair, but it doesn't go not, lower. We're not, we're not big sports ball friend <laughs> fans here. Um, so Phobos wants to know, can we draw our own puppet or are we all drawing the same one? No, draw your own. Draw your own. Draw, you could just do this. <laughs> you could get a sock. No, you can draw your own. Draw your we're, own. So I, I, what I did is I went out and I found pictures of pretty famous puppets Puppets that, like, we know of. And love. Yeah. I mean, mainly American-oriented puppets. Because, honestly, when I looked at s foreign ones, and some of them I know, I figured, like, not they're not as famous, unfortunately, as American puppets are. So, But there, there are, there's at least one that is an international puppet. So, um, so yes. Dr. On Call wants to color our tattoos today. If you remember to do that, you can do that. Or color the, your puppet's tattoos. Or if you have a tattoo of a puppet. Anyway. Let's move oh, on. Oh, my goodness. I know, it's true. All right. It is time to stop the folder roll and get serious about puppets. So let's look at the... Uh, so I'm... Let me just put up the first puppet. Might be the most famous puppet around. Kermit. Kermit. The most... Possibly the most famous frog, would you say? I would say for sure. For certain. For sure. What about Toad of Toad Hall? He's a toad. A toad and a frog are two different things. That's true. As you well know. Can you think of any other frogs? No. no. So, okay, so Kermit is, you know, Kermit's a hand puppet. He's, uh... <laughs> Jen says, Kermit is real. I like to think Kermit is real. Kermit how many? Is... How many do you think you're going to do total? Everyone likes to know sort of in advance how to plan their page. I, I would, I have about a half a dozen. Okay, cool. I was thinking I would show them all to you, but then then you would just get this, you would just leave. So I, I, I desperately want you to stay. So I'm not going to show you all of them. But we're starting here with uh, Elise says frog of frog and toad. I don't know frog and toad. It's because you never raise small children. <laughs> That's true. Frog and toad is a very famous series of kids books. All right. So, yeah. So I would say um, half a dozen. Yeah. Plan for six. Yeah. And I, so I'm going to do them fairly quickly. But it is National Color Day. So I'm going to put some color in too. Yeah. Um, you're... you're Co -po cross pollinating two days, and then we'll have memories about this episode later, which we can get tattooed on ourselves. Well, let's not. So the thing about um, what I was saying, the creepy aspect of this. Now Kermit isn't creepy, right? But puppets are meant to be moving, and they're meant to have a hand in them. So when you just look at still pictures of puppets, it's it's difficult to find ones that really capture their personality right or as they used to say their westonality do you remember those commercials westonality no is it the oil yeah western oil some celebrity minor celebrity of the 80s weird eyes can't think of any other i guess all muppets have these kinds of eyes but it's sort of like a slash a circle with a slash through it i mean they're graphic 
Right, but it's sort of strangely dead in a way, too. Danny. You know what I mean by dead eyes? Like, well, it's like it's those not, cro- when you doesn't see have any, X's in an eye, it's like It also doesn't have any, it doesn't have a highlight in it. And that often can make it seem, you know. This looks a little mutant ninja turtle. Well, don't you think that they're related? <laughs> Juicy. I think there's a relationship between mutant frogs and mutant ninja turtles. They're both amphibians, right? Aren't turtles amphibians? I believe so. Yeah. All right. In, in honor of World Color Day, I'm laying down some Ecoline, Ecoline Green. What did you use? A brush marker for the outline? I used the Pentel Pocket Brush Marker. Yes. Oh, turtles are reptiles. Thank you, Jane. Yeah, I've, many are pointing out our, our error. Turtles are reptiles. In identification. Yeah, they probably are. I mean, they are, definitely are if you said so. I believe you. There's debate. No, they are amphibians. Reptile, amphibian. Make up your mind. We got to apply the Google. It would help if I could spell reptile or Google can spell. It knows Turtles are reptiles because they are four-legged vertebrates with a cold-blooded metabolism and scales covering their body. But aren't frogs and reptiles as well? I know they're amphibians, but are amphibians reptiles? Well, amphibians maybe aren't cold-blooded. Oh man, we have a wildlife biologist here in the chat we do okay. can you help me out <laughs> okay all right angie Our turtles are reptiles frogs, all right, angie. amphibians i'll take it from you stand back i'm a wildlife biologist these people are i need babbling. help i need help you know what we love it when somebody in the chat chimes in with expertise but certainly we don't have any they lack scales i mean we knew that yeah But frogs lack scales too. Yeah. Don't they? Frogs are amphibians and vertebrates. There is not much difference between frogs and toads, and they are not classified separately. This is because the toad lifestyle, which I love. I'm living the toad lifestyle. <laughs> with its dry, rough skin is an adaptation to living in drier habitats. I want to live the toad lifestyle. Please, can we get a lily pad? Can we, can we eat some flies? The toad lifestyle. Do you think Kermit leads the toad lifestyle, or is he strictly frog? No, he's strictly frog. He, he doesn't. He doesn't uh, dally in other amphibian I really think Kermit is human. I mean, he dates. He loves a pig, so I'm not sure that's the frog lifestyle, other than in Jim Henson's brilliant mind. Um, it's kind of disturbing, isn't it, for children? She'll, it's confusing. What was he thinking? Uh, somebody wants to know about the Ecolini markers. Are they waterproof? They're not. They're not waterproof. Okay. They, they are, uh, in fact. They're going to bleed all over the page later onto your shirt? No. What have you ever seen? Here, so this is an Ecoline. This is a brush with water. Well, this is not proving much. But yeah. <laughs> and are you using watercolor pencils? Yeah, I'm using um, I'm using a Derwent Ink Tense pencil. Schwing. Yeah. So you can you can sort of blend them a bit, but I like to put ink tense on top of the echo line, as I do on top of watercolor, because it intensifies it. But also you can you can blend it. So Ecoline isn't really designed for, it's not like a watercolor marker, like uh, the Windsor Newton ones are. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty good.
So I put down a bit of the marker. I'm sorry, I put down a bit of yellow pencil and then I draw over it with the marker. And the marker is wet enough that it kind of activates the pencil, which is a watercolor pencil. So you get something going on there. But I want to keep it nice and yellow because his, whatever this, what is it, what would you even call this thing? It's like a jester's collar that he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that supposed to be frog or is that supposed to be what is it? I don't know. It's like a lily pad around his neck, though. I know. I you know I never really contemplated it before, but it is very cute and it's whimsical and uh, probably not anatomically correct. Yeah, I mean this is this is not appropriate for children. It's just confusing to them. I ne I personally never really watched the Muppet Show. What? I remember I remember watching Sesame Street and Kermit was. Only tangentially on t Sesame Street. Well, right? the Muppet Show was on in the evening. Right. Yeah. I think it was on during my childless years, so I didn't really pay that much attention to it. Um, God is Love says, when I was a kid, my parents immigrated to Canada, and I learned English from puppets on Sesame Street and Muppets. That's very cool. That is cool. Slightly disturbing. What, are there any kind of strange things that you say now that you p picked up from from a from a puppet with a man's hand up its butt? Are there any? All right. Well, that's good enough. I think that that's clearly Kermit, right? You would know that picture in the well, lineup. Heather Andrews was the one who can verify this. Heather interned with the Jim Henson Company in the late '90s in New York. That's right. It used to be in New York. The original Kermit was at one point under my desk in a storage box. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Did you ever put your hand into the Kermit? What was that like? The original Kermit was made from Jim's mom's spring coat and a ping pong ball. Wow, that's intel. That is deep. So his mom <laughs> had a bright green spring coat. Very cool. It kind of looks like felt. I always just assumed it was some kind of felt. Very cool. Good. Spring coat. Yes, the original Kermit was slightly different looking, too, as I remember, right? Slightly different shaped face. Um, all right, let's move on to another puppet. What do you think? Let's do it. All right, this is a slightly disturbing puppet. And so if you go, this is, so this is, how, this is Howdy Doody. <laughs> do you know who Howdy Doody is, young Unfortunately, one? yes. I mean, it's borderline clown and out, so. He's a cowboy. I know. I, I mean... He's a ventriloquist dummy, which is slightly different. Yeah. But he was also a puppet. There was a puppet version of him because he had a TV show. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's going gonna, it's gonna to plague me. Well... He wasn't scary, though, was he? Well, here's the thing is if you go and Google Howdy Doody... And you look at, at the look at the Howdy Doodies. They're really old ones because they used to make Howdy Doodies that you could just buy. Right? You could buy your kid a Howdy Doody doll like you would buy like a Buzz Lightyear. And um, they've disintegrated. So a lot of them were made out of like celluloid or whatever. So they have these pictures of these old Howdy Doodies that have kind of... <laughs> the chat is just blowing up with people... Fearing for their lives, fearing for their like nightmares tonight. Why? Because of Howdy Doody? Yeah. It's well, the, like, I warned you. No at the way, not doing it. At the it. beginning, I, I warned think you'd you. Be the character in my nightmares is this the doll that comes to life and kill people? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> He's beloved. He's beloved. Come on. Are there any people who remember Howdy Doody as a child? Remember how they how they loved him? No. Yeah? Well, this is what I'm telling you. This is why, this is why puppetry has kind of died out now because it's basically, <laughs> at least on TV, it's become like the thing of horror movies. Yeah, these people, Chucky, basically Chucky usurped an entire category of uh, children's fun. Yeah, this is what I was I was telling you about. Look, he's missing a tooth, just like your cousin. <laughs> Be nice. It's not a missing tooth. It's a gap in his teeth. It shows that he grew up in a farm. Without orthodontia. That's true. All right, we'll try and get through how to do it quickly. Seeing as there's such antipathy towards this poor fellow, he's in the he's in the Smithsonian. He's a national treasure, like Charles Manson. 
He looks a lot like, uh, when you're drawing him at least, he's kind of like Alfred E. Newman. Yeah, someone else mentioned uh, that he's the evil version of Alfred Newman. Alfred E. Newman. <laughs> Susan said, can we please go back to animals? I can't afford all the therapy I would require. I'm sorry. Toughen up, people. Yeah, most people are boycotting this. Seriously. Yeah, it's not howdy doody time here on Draw With Me. All right, well, I've started it, so I have to finish it. I'm sorry. I warned you. Why didn't you say anything, JJ? You should have told me because you didn't know. I did this secretly. I think he's cute in a disturbing way. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm withholding commentary because I noticed that. I was wondering yeah. why you were so quiet because you can barely contain yourself <laughs> with your revulsion. <laughs> Look, this is part of being an artist. Let's say you were, um, you know, Rembrandt, and you had a uh, a client who came in who looked like this, <laughs> and said to you. And you would say, I'd rather starve. Mr. Van Ryn. Cold, I would, dark Warren. No, not Rembrandt would stepped up to the plate. He's like, I'm a professional. I don't care if you have a gap teeth and weird. Some people are uh, triggered by the freckles. You're triggered by freckles. Come on now. Really? They're cute. Yeah. What about them? Is this going south quickly, this yeah, episode? nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. Everybody's... I like it. You know what? Take off your sock, make a puppet, and draw that while I finish up Howdy Doody. Is that okay? Is that a good suggestion? I'm surprised that when you Google the word Howdy Doody that it doesn't give you some like X-rated stuff. It's a beloved icon. What you, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, he's sort of giving me Opie, who was very cute and turned into Ron Howard, right? So what's the problem? Right. So I'm going to think of him this way. What is it that's creepy about him exactly? See, this is again the point I was making before, which is he is frozen. It's too lifelike. I think that's what it is. You know? Oh, it's the, uh, what's it called? The Uncanny Valley. Yeah. All right. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm sorry. I just got to do one more thing. All right, well, I guess we'll know next week whether anybody else drew. Oh, I like do. the way you did that that shirt, the checkers. That was smart. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think mine is, is mine cuter or, or less cute? I'm not sure. I don't know, I gave him a, like a brown mustache, Hitler mustache. That'll even make it better. All right, moving on. Sorry, <laughs> I'll move this off, sc off screen. Deep sigh of relief. How are we with this? Anybody troubled by any vegans out there? Miss Piggy. Is this all right? You have, po you have positive associations here, right? Absolutely. She was a... Uh, She's a feminist icon. She, I was going to say she was an early role model. You mean for your <laughs> eating habits or... <laughs> she knew how to live life, I think. It's true. She's she didn't spend a lot of time and energy on self doubt. No, she had self recrimination. She was she was full of confidence. She and, liked herself. Uh, yeah, as we all should. Yeah, I think that that's good. Didn't she write a memoir? I mean, probably. I think she did.
Oh, yeah. Kristen Stewart just reminded me uh, she was very into karate. Uh-oh, I'm getting a spinning wheel. You are? Yeah. Uh-oh. See what I got over here? Refresh your page, see what happens. Yeah, everyone else is saying internet crapping out. Just say we're working on it. Hang on. I mean, it seems fine. Everyone is, it's, the internet's out. I can't even get on dog mesh. It's asking me to use my phone as a hotspot over here. Not connected. Boy. Might be back. Are we back? I think we might be back. Are we back? Hmm. All right, back. I think we're back. What happened there? I think it was, it was the ghost of Howdy Doody. <laughs> Woo! Never a dull moment. Yeah. Now we're going to watch uh, the replay of you. Resetting the internet. Cool. <laughs> People love behind the scenes stuff. Right. Yeah, so, see, what? see, this is where the stream is it's still on you fixing the internet. So yeah. if you drag the thing all the way to the end, it should be okay. Mm -hmm. Drag the little thing at the bottom. There you go. Or is it just Frozen? Yeah. Are we going to do any characters from Frozen? <laughs> no puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, everybody says it's working, so I'm not going to worry about yeah. it. Yeah, if you're still on the screen of Danny's phone fixing the internet, just uh, refresh. Yeah, it'll catch up.
I never really realized Miss Piggy is flesh tone. I just always thought of her as pink. Maybe it's just this picture. Is that possible? No, this is her, her natural color. She's sort of human, Caucasian, right? Yeah, she's peach. But that, isn't that kind of what pigs are? Pigs aren't really pink either. I mean, pigs come in different colors for That's certain. True. Yeah, my, my Miss Piggy is starting to unravel a bit. You the stresses of a poor stream. <laughs> I have to move on. This whole thing is turning. You've got to give her her blue eyes. Done. And her purple sort of eye, eye shadow. Eyeshadow. Yeah. I mean, she didn't leave the house without a full face. Well, because she's a puppet and she was painted that way. Well, because... But is that a good sign? Is that a good feminist marker? You know, feminists come in more than one variety. And I think feminism is about... Uh... But should a pig really become an icon? Is that correct? Yeah. I do think it's correct. I think she was fabulous in every way. That's true. All right. She looks a bit sad, your version. It's true. She looks kind of plaintive. Let me see if I can fix her. I like how you did her hair. I think it's because of her eyes that she looks Yeah, sad. it's the right, or her left eye, your right eye, is a bit half-masked. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm just going to ruin it if I do any more. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on, because so far I've drawn... Kermit looking a little lame. I've drawn a horrifying howdy doody, and I've drawn Miss Piggy looking sad. So you know what Miss Piggy would say? You do you. What would no, she say? No, she would say all of her drawings are fabulous. She would. the best drawings, and she's going to make another great drawing, a magnificent piece. <laughs> Here's another potentially controversial character. Lamb Chop. Okay, so you know Lamb Chop. I'm pretty sure I had a lamb chop puppet. Really? Yeah, I loved it. Why is it controversial? I thought you were just going to say, I don't know who that is, because you didn't know who Kukla, Fran, and Ollie are. Yeah, I didn't. I don't. I still don't. Yeah. So this is the this is the puppet that I had a real struggle with. I could not find good pictures of her. But so many people have made their own versions of lamb chop, and I thought that was nice. You know? Well, it doesn't seem hard to make, particularly. Well, getting the expression right, I think, is the issue. Well, the expression is in your hand, right? That's what they Hooked say. Up in the hand. That's what they say. So that's why it's it was a bit difficult to find a good puppet, because unless you have Sherry Lewis up your butt, it's a bit difficult to be lively if you're a lamb. I think it's kind of cruel to call a lamb lamb chop, though, don't you think? A little. I mean, knowing like, what we now know. It's like calling a, a, a beloved cow burger. Yeah. She, lamb chop also has these lamb chop legs, which I didn't, couldn't find a good picture of. You know, they kind of come down, they stick down. No, I, I don't really remember They're that. like frilly legs, like a... I don't remember You know those little like, things that you put on a lamb chop? No. Yeah, they're like kind of like that, but little frilly things. Well, sort of like Kermit's ruffle. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Upside down.
I like that's a nice approach to that fleece. Thanks. Yeah, Sherry Lewis uh, hand crocheted this puppet. You know, her daughter still does her act. She does it particularly for the military. In fact, I think Laptop is officially like a, a general in the in the Marines or something like that, or is a colonel in the Marines. That's fast. Do we have anyone in the chat that can verify this? I, I found it out from Google. In my endless search for a good reference picture, I've learned quite a lot about Lamp Chop. I think she was originally on this, like the CBS Morning News or something. Always had her eyes closed, though, but a lot of eyelashes, so that's nice. All right. Let's move on to some something else. Is anybody enthusiastic about Lamb Chop? Have any memories? No, but Jeff Schinkel has uh, verified Lamb Chop is an honorary three-star general in the Marines. There you go. Very cool. All right, so do you know who this is? No. This is King Friday from the Mr. Rogers Show. I don't remember King Friday. He's a very sort of pompous, arrogant character. So we'll draw him quickly and badly. He's King Friday the 13th. <laughs> I What did you think about the Mr. Rogers puppets? Do you do you have much of an awareness of them? Uh I certainly remember the Mr. Rogers show, and I remember quite enjoying it, but I don't really remember the puppets. Do you remember Daniel Tiger? No. no. Do you remember watching it as a child, or did yes. you watch it as an adult? I watched it as a child. Yeah, there was strange... Child of the 70s. It was, like, right on target for me. There were strange puppets, because they were very kind of... sort of crude by TV standards, I think. They look like something you'd find like in a box in a church basement or something. Yeah, they look old timey. Yeah. They sort of look like uh, like nativity scenes. That's what I'm saying. It's like a yeah. It's like like his head looks like it was carved out of wood or something. And the puppetry was just like basically like somebody holding it up. Like it didn't really do it didn't it didn't move its mouth and uh, it just kind of moved its hands. I'm going to try and commemorate that awkwardness in my drawing. And you've managed to make him sort of look like a little lion. Oh my goodness. See, our chat has the most amazing, like, deep intelligence. I actually work with a new Fred, says Laura Mayer. <gasps> my, oh my God, really? That's very cool. So what can you tell us about those puppets then? We never watched any of those Mr. Rogers movies. Well, I guess we watched the documentary, didn't we? Yeah. We, we never watched the... Who was it? Tom Hanks or someone who played him? I don't remember that. You don't remember that there was a movie, like a biopic about Mr. Rogers? I mean, I feel we watched it. But no, we didn't. We didn't? No. Just like we never watched the Bob Ross thing either. Yeah, we're bad. Well, I just there's certain things I just kind of don't want to know that much about. Like I don't want to know bad stuff about Bob Ross or Mr. Rogers. Right. Me too. Let 
That's really exciting. <laughs> Jen said, you have to watch those movies on the airplane. But yes, that would require for us to go somewhere. <laughs> Which we don't do. Watching movies on the airplane. That's old school. I only watch a movie on the airplane if they give me peanuts and a snack. They don't do that anymore, do they? I don't, don't think they serve peanuts anymore. There's too many have people pe have peanut allergies. severe peanut allergy from them even being in the air, in their airspace. All right, well, I think anybody who knows King Friday would instantly recognize this as King Friday. Yeah, I, I think that's true. Instantly. I know that he's a beloved character. He's kind of a pompous ass, as I said. But. Okay, so Laura has uh, verified what I was hoping to hear. Fred was exactly the same on camera and off. He was extremely kind and genuine. I'm, I have no doubt about that. I'm going to cry. Yeah, I just don't want to see Tom Hanks necessarily. It seems redundant, doesn't it? I mean, I think Tom Hanks, I'm sure, portrayed him All right, now this is one that's going to definitely trigger people. Mm. This is... Trigger warning. This is Punch from the Punch and Judy show. Oof. He's a classic puppet, though. I like his colors. Yeah, I mean, he's... I'm not sure how to draw him exactly. I might... <laughs> Lisa Stewart is like, not doing it. <laughs> Another not doing it? <laughs> Just say no. Yeah, he's he's very, very much like the thing from uh, Saw. Right? He's very Saw. And uh, did you ever see a Punch and Judy show? No, never. Super violent. Basically, Punch would beat Judy and beat, and then there were policemen and they would beat each other. It was just. It was a bad show. But it was, that's all we had when I was a child back in the Middle Ages. It is kind of clowny, too. There's something a little, like, medieval about it. Because I think it goes back to those days, doesn't oh, it? Oh, I, I don't know. I told you I didn't even know who. It definitely goes back to the Victorian times. You, so you'd never even heard of Punch and Judy? I've he I vaguely heard of it, but I wouldn't have any association Well, so the idea of the Punch and Judy show was that basically somebody would roll up into your village with these puppets and like set up a puppet, you know, like a little theater in the street. Mm -hmm. And then they would have a whole show, which is often very similar. And then they would pass around the hat. This, I've made it even more saw-like, I'm afraid. <laughs> I like the way they're, the composition is sort of like overlapping and starting to blend together. Yeah, it has a Hieronymus Bosch feel to it. Yeah, Deb has noted it's just, you've succeeded in making Howdy Doody feel innocuous. Yeah, suddenly Howdy Doody is like cute, right? Yeah. <laughs> I told you. Well, you were forewarned that this is going to be creepy, but we're moving on. All right. Okay, so this is Daniel Tiger. What do you think? Come on. That's cute, right? That's so cute. So that's Daniel Tiger again from Mr. Rogers. And I mean, uh, what's with the watch? He, he, that was his thing. I don't know a huge amount about this. I didn't grow up in this culture, but... I've lived here for a while. So those of you who grew up with Mr. Rogers, maybe you can explain what the deal was with this puppet. Sadly, I don't remember the puppets from Mr. Rogers at all. What do you remember about it then? 
I mean, I remember a lot of exposition. He would come on and explain things in a kid-friendly way. And I remember there being guests who would come and visit with him. I remember his cardigan and his shoes. This is a cute watch. It is. We should have gotten some puppets from Pee Wee's Playhouse. I feel like we used to have a Pee Wee. Did he disappear? Maybe yeah. in the movie. No, didn't... we had a Pee Wee. Uh, I think Jack has it now. Oh, maybe Jack does. It was doesn't. his originally. Yeah. That is a cute bugger. So cute. Cute, cute little paws. But that wristwatch is like something like your grandmother would have, isn't it? It is. I feel, I feel like I had a watch like that at one point. Like a little rubber kind of stretchy band? I think they were leather. Jay Dibble says, I thought Mr. Rogers and his show was creepy. No, what? Yeah, yeah I know. Cherry. That's true. Cherry. Do you remember Cherry? No, I don't know what you're talking about. That was Pee Wee's Playhouse. No, Mr. Rogers is not creepy. Oh, Cherry. Now I know who you mean, yes. Cherry. I thought you were saying Cherry like the fruit. I don't think they ever made Mr. Rogers puppets for like for as products. One of the nice things about it, you know? Oh, yeah, it was before everything was commodified. I think it was also public television. It just wasn't the kind of thing that they would do. You I know? mean, you definitely had, like, Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch and but I think Monster. That, but I think that generally... And that's uh, PBS. I mean, I definitely had those toys. But I think the Hensons were probably more, you know, into turning, making it into a business than Mr. Rogers was. Maybe our friend who worked for Mr. Rogers could tell us. All right, so that's Daniel Tiger, who doesn't really have any stripes like a tiger, even though his name is Daniel Striped Tiger. His, his stripes are only on his toenails. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, he's so cute, though. But Daniel probably was supposed to represent whiskers. the kids in the audience. That's what, about his, what about his whiskers? Good point. Yes. So that's a good point that Gina makes, that he was sort of like Mr. Rogers would talk to Daniel and reassure him. He was he was always kind of troubled, and he would tell him that he was good and those sorts of things. See, I mean, how can anyone argue with that? Right, that's nice. That's not creepy. It's nice. It's as nice as anything that has ever existed, in my opinion. Cute, nice. Good right. job on those whiskers. Thanks. You did those confidently. You didn't like hesitate. No, you just put them in, plonked them in. Whoa, I'm out, of, I'm out of animals. I'm out of puppets. No way. Thank God. Wow, you jammed through those. Yeah, I did. I guess I'm just going to... I'll title them and be done. Okay. Because I, I thought this was going to be... More I thought popular? this would be a, wonder, a wonderful, heartwarming experience instead of a nightmarish, <laughs> triggering <laughs> trauma filled show but you know it's okay I, I think it's more good than bad you sound like mr rogers now that was he was famous for that for that statement <laughs> what? lisa stewart said we complain about everything <laughs> who's we um, the, 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 the new people. You, you, people. <laughs> yeah. you try drawing these things. Go ahead. In fact, that's the whole point of the show. Go ahead and try and draw these things. <laughs> Make them uncreepy. I think complaining is on brand. I'm into it. All right, so this is Punch.
Danny Bean just said, great memories. So we have managed to there we, go. we have managed to coalesce around puppets, colors, and memories, which are three of the twelve <laughs> recognizable days for March the twenty first. We should have gotten some tattoos in here somewhere. Yeah. I think they're all recognizable to those who know. I mean, they're not necessarily um, amazing drawings, but they're. I think they're rec they're good likenesses. I agree. I agree. I think there's something really to be said for <clears throat> individually. They're maybe a bit weird, but as a page, it's really charming. It's charm overload. As opposed to being like a nightmarish convocation of hellish <laughs> childhood trauma. Yeah. <sighs> Jeff says, I've learned I'm so old that my happy childhood puppet memories is the stuff of nightmares for folks younger than me. Yeah. It's true. What about Barney? Barney's kind of troubling. Barney? Purple dinosaur? I mean, nobody liked Barney. We, When Jack was little, we would always say to him, Barney's, not Barney. If you're a New Yorker, you'd get that joke. Sadly, there is no more Barney's. And Barney, Barney <laughs> continues. Virginia has been smiling the whole hour. Good. That's good. That's good. Whew. I need a break. I need, uh, yeah, we probably need... Uh, <laughs> I need to call my therapist. <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> Maybe she has puppets. <clears throat> yes. Mrs. KB says, I used to hate Barney when I was younger. Barney? I mean, I think the problem with Barney is that there was like a generation of children who became like so addicted to him. He was everywhere and he was annoying. Yeah, maybe. Over merchandise could be. Yeah. Teletubbies, another thing. Tell it that'd be slightly disturbing. But I think that's what it is, is if it's your generation, you it's respond cute. to it as a child. But if you're an adult or from another generation and you look at it and you say, what the hell? That seems nightmarish. It's because I have things, I mean, there was, a, there was a character named Sooty in England. It was like a little panda bear. And that was a puppet. And that was very famous. Um, for some reason, I associate it with Rolf Harris, who had a, it was an Australian guy, had a TV show, and then later on was outed as a, as a pedophile. Oh, no. Yeah, it was a big deal. So if you're English at all, you'll probably know of those things. Um, so, yeah. That's not where I wanted to end this show. Why? Jeez. It brings out I mean, the darkness Pinoc I do me. think Pinocchio was an oversight. Oh, no, no. I had, what happened to Pinocchio? I don't know. I had Pinocchio, and the Pinocchio that I had, in fact, was the original Pinocchio. The original o OP. All right, well, you can put it up there, and people can there, add it to their page. There it is. <gasps> That's the original Pinocchio. So this is from the Italian <laughs> book that Pinocchio was based on. So this, these are the illustrations in the Italian book. I mean, that is so gorge. It's nice, right? So nice. But What's it has, going on behind him? Is it like a It's like boat? a whole scene of like, how, you can see there's a whale behind him. There's oh, a yeah, snake, yeah. A snake a down snake. by his knee, yeah. But he um, he's sort of like Punch in a way, same kind of Pierrot collar, big nose. So we could have fitted him in, but I it's forgot. really long I fingers. Know. Look at those hands. They're, yeah. The hands are... It's a, it's, a, it's a disturbing story. It's like way, way intense. I mean, it's very intense, very intense and not very mild. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not for children. <laughs> <clears throat> As Jeff says, "Punch chopped up Pinocchio." I bet. <laughs> All right, guys. It's All right, been let's fun. wrap it up. It's been fun. Um, let's check it out. Let's see. We want to see your um, 
your puppets if you care to show them to us. Yeah. Share them on social media. Tag them hashtag SBS, which stands for Sketchbook School. Draw with me. Just put them up on Instagram. Put them up on Facebook. Type in S hashtag SBS draw with me and we will find them and we'll include them next week's show. So please do it. We try and track down every single one and to include everybody's art. So um, if you've made even one drawing today that you like and you want to share, even if you've made one drawing that you don't like and you want to share, we're, we're almost certainly going to like it. So um, Danny's essays, I write an essay every Friday and it'll be out tomorrow. I actually wrote it earlier in the week for a change. And I was quite pleased with it, as I am always. I am sort of the Miss Piggy of essay writing, and uh, I've never written a bad one. Drawing is different, but essay writing, I have no... Don't you agree? Yeah, I do. I'm the Miss Piggy of draw of essay writing? Uh, you sometimes give yourself a hard time, but you shouldn't. <laughs> um, and also, I'll teach you to draw. This, this series of uh, videos that I made on how to draw here on YouTube is doing really well a lot a lot of people are learning to draw and telling me that they are getting a lot out of it so if you want to have some simple fun i've posted i think 12 in the series so far i'm also starting to work on a new series that i'm going to be starting to share soon that i think you will like as well a whole new series and i don't know there's just an awful lot going on i did an essay earlier this week which people are responding to um, about really the kind of the purpose of art in in your life and bringing you joy and how it connects you to other people if you look on this channel you will see it and of course subscribe to this channel and hit the hit the uh the bell so that you will be reminded of next time we are getting together which will be next thursday at nine o'clock and try to get some of your friends to subscribe so we can meet our goal. relatives our they, goal they don't even have to what be people you goal? like they could be people you dislike um, but you show them the howdy doody. Co your coworkers. I would go to the CEO of your company and suggest a company-wide email recommending that everybody pencils down 9 a.m. Pacific on Thursdays. Um, that's about it. That's yeah. all the nonsense that we have for you this week. We'll, we'll see, see you, you again week. next time. Yeah. Bye, -bye. Bye for now.